What's up everyone? Welcome back to Quest Mode. I'm Josh and today I'm counting down the top 10 RPGs for the Nintendo Switch as ranked by their Metacritic score. Now this list is strictly reserved for traditional RPGs so you won't find any strategy games or roguelikes with a bunch of RPG elements. Nope, these are your purebred story-driven role-playing experiences. So with that in mind, let's get into it. Like a few other games on this list, Earthlock was inspired by the JRPGs of the late 90s. Unlike other games on this list, it has a very unique development history. First released in 2016 to lukewarm reviews, the developers decided to put the forthcoming sequel on hold so they could correct their mistakes with the original title. The result is a more polished game that eventually released on Switch to more positive critiques. Most of the gameplay is pretty standard JRPG stuff. You run around the overworld from a top-down, isometric perspective, solve puzzles, craft items, and complete side quests. The story is pretty run-of-the-mill, as are the visuals, but where Earthlock distinguishes itself is the combat. Each character has multiple stances that offer unique abilities. You can switch between them mid-battle, which makes for some rather tactical and strategic scuffles. You might want to try some of the other games on this list first, but if you've played them all, or you don't feel like they're for you, Earthlock might be that undiscovered role-playing game on Switch you've been looking for. I Am Setsuna tells a melancholy tale of a woman who sets out to sacrifice herself for the greater good of the game's cold and snowy land. While it's not your typical save the world story, I Am Setsuna makes no apologies for drawing heavy inspiration from the JRPGs that made saving the world so popular in the mid-90s. The combat in particular will feel especially familiar to fans of Chrono Trigger. Enemies are always visible as you explore the top-down environments, so there are no random encounters. And when you do dive into battle, the magic and skill system offer a ton of variety. Despite its close resemblance to classic JRPGs, I Am Setsuna does do some things very differently. For example, leveling up only boosts your HP and MP with no effect on your more granular stats. Also, the in-game currency can only be obtained by selling items, as opposed to engaging in combat. These adjustments to the typical formula will catch long-time RPGers off guard, and they make I Am Setsuna feel like more than just a copycat. Also worth a mention is the music, which is spectacular and goes a long way to sell the heartfelt and sorrowful story. By mixing a well-written, top-down role-playing experience with a surprisingly fleshed-out golf game, Golf Story sets itself apart from nearly every other role-playing game, well, ever. The story tells of a guy who decides to leave his old life behind to become a golfer. Despite his best efforts, he fails to impress anybody, anywhere, anytime. Seriously, everybody in this game thinks you suck. To improve your game, you've got to complete golf-related quests and challenges and partake in full-on competitive golf matches. Best of all, the mechanics of the golf game require more skill than the visual presentation lets on, which is a huge plus because it makes Golf Story feel at times like you're getting two games for the price of one. On their own, both the role-playing experience and the golf game are good enough, but when combined, they add up to more than the sum of their parts and provide enough novelty to keep Golf Story fun up until the very end. One of the hidden gems on the Switch, Battle Chasers Night War released to little fanfare, but it's a game that old school RPG lovers, particularly fans of the mid and late 90s Final Fantasy games, should check out. Right off the bat, the combat is fantastic. It's turn-based and involves using basic attacks to boost a stat called Overcharge that enables you to use more impressive special abilities later on. Of course, the system deepens over the game's 30-plus hour quest, and it'll feel familiar enough for any JRPG enthusiast. Exploration is also a big part of Battle Chasers, and it's a pleasure to navigate the hand-drawn overworld and make your way through the colorful and detailed isometric dungeons. As you can see, the game is gorgeous, and it's got stunning audio to match. 
That said, Battle Chasers isn't perfect. The story never really raises the stakes, and you may notice a few technical issues such as long load times and the occasional audio hiccup. Even so, I'm surprised more people aren't talking about this game because it's one of the best and most beautiful role-playing experiences on the Switch. South Park The Fractured But Whole needs no introduction. It's a South Park RPG that makes good on everything the show does so well, all while delivering solid gameplay. The humor is over the top, disgusting, poignant, profane, timely, and shocking, and often all at once. Unlike the game's predecessor, The Stick of Truth, The Fractured But Whole parodies pop culture's decades-long obsession with superheroes. Stan, Kyle, Kenny, and Cartman form their own band of heroes and set out on what inevitably devolves into an absurdly hilarious quest. The gameplay systems here are simpler than those in the more traditional games on this list, but thankfully combat is more thoughtful and strategic than in the Stick of Truth. This makes for a game that's entirely accessible for non-RPG fans, yet still deep enough to hold most players' interest, especially for those who appreciate the raunchy humor. And farts. This game has a lot of farts. If you haven't played it and you're curious about the best potty humor to ever grace a video game and you like smart satire, you won't be disappointed by the fractured but whole. Ease 8 is an action RPG that begins with you being shipwrecked on a mysterious island searching for other survivors and building a village from which to survive. On the surface, that sounds more like a strategy RPG, but make no mistake, this is definitely an action and exploration heavy game. Unlike most traditional JRPGs, the combat is in real time, which goes a long way to keep up the pace of the game. Yet there's enough nuance, such as the ability to save up a stat called SP in order to dish out special abilities, that it feels like way more than just a generic hack and slash. The game also provides plenty of motivation to explore, whether it's to find loot or just take in the gorgeous world around you. Stunning vistas await and you'll journey through numerous detailed dungeons and dozens of unique locales. As you explore, you'll gather materials that you can take back to your camp to create new weapons, potions, armor, and other consumables. Overall, Ease 8 is an awesome and well-rounded RPG for players who like exploration and are tired of the same old turn-based combat. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 might be one of the best reviewed RPGs on the Switch, but it's also one of the most divisive. The game is tempting for exploration junkies due to its wonderful and fantastical world made up of massive creatures that are so big they literally make up the entirety of the game's sprawling environments. However, don't be fooled, this is a deep game with a steep learning curve that relies on complex JRPG conventions. You'll have to learn deep menus and an involved combat system if you want to make the most of the experience. At first, the real-time combat seems simple because of its reliance on auto attacks, but later in the game, a layered system is revealed that has you filling up meters in order to execute special moves, combos, and chain attacks, all while simultaneously managing other things like cooldown timers. It's also worth noting that the game was criticized for its pacing as it does take more than a few hours to get going, but with a Metacritic score of 83 and with a AAA presentation that's second to none on the Switch, it's safe to say that this is a great choice for any JRPG fan, or gamers with a knack for deep and thoughtful if sometimes demanding gameplay. There's not a lot I can say about Skyrim that you don't already know. It ranks among my personal top 10 games of all time, and if you somehow haven't played it, you owe it to yourself to give it a try, even if you're not a role-playing game fan. The world of Skyrim remains one of the richest, most engrossing ever built, and that's in large part due to the freedom you were given. Sure, there are many other open world games, but the feeling of absolute wanderlust that this game instills after the first cutscene is one of my favorite experiences in all of gaming. From how you explore the world to how you develop your character and progress through the story, it's all up to you. And then there are the dragons. 
Doing battle with each of them seems like an impossible task at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll want to hunt each one of them down. I can't possibly explain what makes this game so great in so little time, but the fact that you can now play it anywhere, anytime, nearly seven years after its initial release is a testament to how timeless this game is and how far video games have come. Another game that was inspired by the classic Super Nintendo RPGs of the 1990s, Octopath Traveler does a better job of paying respectful homage to the games that inspired it than any other game on this list. Quite simply, this is the old school experience retro RPG fans have been hoping for. At the game's outset, you choose one of eight characters, each with their own story and unique abilities. But unlike many games where you choose from multiple characters, Octopath Traveler lets you switch between the seven others at any point in the game. This provides a lot of flexibility to mix things up and play the game however you want. As for the combat, battles are turn-based and reward experimenting with your skills and abilities as well as exploring the vulnerabilities of your enemies. Deepening things more is a job system that diversifies your arsenal, providing countless ways to approach combat and while gameplay is king, perhaps most notable about Octopath Traveler are its visuals, which look like a 16-bit RPG crossed with a pop-up book taken straight from your dreams. If you play this stunning work of digital art to completion, expect to spend over 100 hours, but even if you play through only one character's story, it's still well worth your time. If you're judging West of Loathing based on looks alone, you'll likely miss out on one of the funniest games of the entire generation. The game is not only entirely black and white, it's also entirely built with line art and stick figures. But even if you failed to see the charm in its visual presentation, you'd have to lack a pulse to not be smitten by the game's humor. No kidding, there isn't a single paragraph in this game that isn't laced with unexpected wit or some hilarious twist. Every line is worth reading, and that's such a relief in a genre that's often padded with unnecessary or just plain boring dialogue. The game's humor also props up some of the best aspects of the gameplay. Puzzles are often nonsensical and require the use of ridiculous objects or achieving inexplicable objectives. And just like any good role-playing game, you'll travel to somewhere over a hundred unique locations and pack your inventory with useful items. If there's one area where West of Loathing lacks, it's the combat, which is very basic and is the only aspect of the game that might take itself too seriously. But it doesn't matter. Just like with South Park, The Fractured But Whole, with which this game shares quite a bit in common, the writing and outrageous humor is more than enough to keep you hooked throughout the 8-hour campaign. Plus, the game is only 11 bucks. Well, thank you guys so much for watching the entire video. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. And if you never want to miss one of my videos, all it takes is clicking that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.